Hello everyone, my name is Heidi Helen. Uh, Helen is my middle name, but I like the name, sorry, I like the way my two names sound together. Uh, I've been working on apps as a designer for the last four years. Um, I've been remotely assisting a developer in the United States and he mentored me a lot in working on apps. And I also brought my own skills and flair to the game with a background in visual arts. So my topic today is designing for iOS resources you gotta know. Now, when you're designing for iOS, there's so many aspects you gotta know. Where do you even start? I've put a bunch here on the slide. I'm not gonna talk about all of these today, but I am going to cover six of them. There we go. So I'm talking about guides first of all. Guides that you can look at to learn about how to design for iOS. Now, some people are new to iOS design some people have been doing it a long time. So there's a chance you might already know some of these. But I also hope that there's something new here that you'll find interesting as well. So you'll see on the bottom of some of these slides my Twitter handle, Heidi underscore Helen. So the human interface guidelines is the first place to start when you want to learn about designing for iOS. That's the first thing I read when I wanted to design an iOS app. It goes over a bunch of things like app architecture, icons and images, bars, views and controls. Now, in the human interface guidelines, they have a section for design resources. Um, some people call the HIG, the HIG or the HIG, by the way. Um, so, in these resources, you can get a whole lot of templates that you can use for Sketch, Keynote, Photoshop, and Adobe XD. It has things like the user interface, uh, dynamic type tables, and also fonts. The next guide I want to talk about is design plus code. This is one that I personally found really useful when I wanted to learn how to design apps. I feel like it's the missing manual for designing for iOS. It goes into a lot more detail. Uh, it's authored by Meng Tu, who um, made it as an interactive book. It's got videos and um, text and activities for you to learn as you go along. Now, when I did his course, I just did the design part of it because um, I don't do development myself. I work with a developer, as I mentioned earlier. So it, w it has activities that you can go through to learn those fundamentals for designing for iOS. And then there's also a chapter on learning Sketch and other software, which I use to completely learn how to use Sketch. And I'm going to talk about software a bit later as well. So that's guides. Next is software. So there are quite a lot of apps that you can use to design and prototype your iOS apps in. 
I had quite a lot of fun making this slide, and as I'm a designer, I put it in color order, if anyone noticed. <laughs> At least I tried to. Um, anyway, I'm, again, I'm not going to be talking about all of these today, but I think there's at least um, seven key players, which are Adobe XD, Figma, Flinto, FrameX, InVision Studio, Principle, and Sketch. So um, these being key players is kind of based on my own observations of people in the community talking about them and being excited about them. Framer X, for example, is currently in beta. You can sign up on the waiting list to use it. Um, so a lot of people already have access to it and other people on the waiting list still. Envision Studio is also in early access, but you can download it from their website. Um, I'm a big sketch girl myself. As I mentioned, I, I learned how to use Sketch and I, I've invested the most time into that one. So that's what I personally use to design apps. So I'm going to talk about a few different um, aspects of these different software. First of all, price. So a couple of these do have free versions you can use. So if budget is an issue, you can start using something for free, like Adobe XD, you can use for free, but I'm pretty sure you only get one active project with that. I don't know if it's share, like an active shareable project, maybe you can have more. Then they have plans that go up, which are also part of Creative Cloud. So if you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you can already use it. Um, Figma also has a free version and then goes up and the same with Envision Studio. Um, Framer X, since it's rather new, I was looking at the prices for Framer. So you can, that's a subscription as well. And then Flinto, Principle and Sketch, all of those you pay per year and you get a year's worth of updates with that. Um, at the end of a year, you don't have to upgrade if you don't want to. You can keep using the software. You just have to upgrade it if you want to get, sorry, you have to renew your license if you want to get updates again. So collaboration is something important um, for teams working on projects. Um, now, Framer X, Envision Studio and Figma all have this, but the rest of them don't. However, there, there is ways of working around that, like you can, you can share like your work from those to your team members or put it in Dropbox or something. It just doesn't have like, you can't work on it at the same time and both see what you're doing, for instance. Um, since I work with just one developer, using Sketch is fine for me, and then I hand off the work to him later on. Um, using, um, using Zeppelin, which has a whole lot of guidelines and specs that developers can look at. Okay, prototyping. Now, by prototyping, I mean, can you join the screens together and kind of show the journey that the user would go through? All of the software you can prototype in. It's rather new in Sketch, but you can do it there as well. All of the software you can design and draw in with vectors. So you can make your buttons, your icons, animations. So can you do complex animations like joining, sorry, complex animations like, um, I don't know, a heart with little circles bursting around it when you tap it. Um, only a few of these tools you can do that in. Well, actually, more than half of the tools I'm mentioning here. 
Flinto, Framer, Envision, and Principle, they can all do those kind of more advanced animations, but they're not yet available in XD or Sketch or Figma as far as I was able to find out. Components, so by components I mean, can you reuse things like buttons and icons and tab bars and nav bars? Um, like, is there a symbol library that you can reuse things again and they'll update everywhere if you update it somewhere? So, Sketch has this, Principle, Envision, Framer, Figma and XD, but Flinto does not. Flinto is more concentrating on little animations that you want to do. So, what platforms are these available on? So, all of these are available on Mac. Most Apple people do like using Mac, so that's handy. But in case you don't have a Mac, you can also use XD on Windows, or Figma on Windows, or Envision Studio on Windows in the future. They're first gonna launch on the Mac, and then they're gonna do Windows later. Out of all of these, Fig Figma is the most accessible, they have it available on the web, on Linux, or Linux, depending on how you like to say that. Um, yeah, and the Mac and web. Then, um, let me see. It, I just want to mention about Envision Studio that they also have separate um, tools for Envision, like an online suite of tools. And Envision Studio is going to be a downloadable app, and that will work with the online tools as well. So that's software. Next, I want to talk about a few UI kits. Okay, one that I really like using is Apply Pixels. Apply Pixels is made by a guy called Michael Flareup, who's quite a well-known designer. He's worked on a lot of apps and, and designs, games as well. Um, on his website, he has a bunch of templates you can download. Um, some of the best, I think, are his UI kits for iOS 11 and 12. Um, they're available for both Sketch and Photoshop. And then I also really like his app icon template. You can design your icon in there and then export it for all the sizes you need for your project in Xcode. And it even exports with a file that you can drop straight into Xcode. So um, Apply Pixels um, is a subscription every month to get access to all the resources. However, there's also some freebies on there, so it's worth checking out. Next, I want to mention Facebook Design. So Facebook Design has a whole lot of resources you can download as well. They have a UI kit, and the reason that UI kits are so great is because it speeds up the time you have in creating a design so you don't have to remake all those elements by scratch. And it's also usually more accurate than what you might make yourself because it's already been compared to screenshots. They also have a bunch of device mockups which are useful for marketing your apps. So that's UI kits. Next, I want to talk about some fonts. So Apple's system font is San Francisco, as a lot of people would be aware. Now, I recommend when you are using a font in your app, you should ideally use the system font first and foremost, because that is already optimized for the system. It's a very well designed and well thought out font. For example, it has characters in it for other languages. It's well kerned. So 
if you're going to use a custom font, it might not have that much thought gone it, that has gone into it. So you can download San Francisco on Apple's website. That's the URL there, and I will have a link to my slides at the end. So in the HIG, Apple also has a section on typography, which goes through a whole lot of guidelines on using font in your apps. That's what it looks like. Um, now, if you want to use another font in your app, iOS also has a bunch of other fonts already available. So you can use one of these. This is a website iOS font list, which goes through fonts that are available. So if you have a Mac, a lot of these will already be installed on your Mac. So if you're using design software, you can choose fonts that are already available on iOS and know that you'll be allowed to use them. Now, another great resource is Google Fonts. All the fonts that Google has are free to use. They are, they do specifically share the fonts for web use. However, the licenses are mostly open source. It's worthwhile still checking out the license of, licenses of them. And uh, these fonts are pretty well designed as well. So they will have less issues than maybe a custom font you get from, from elsewhere. So all the fonts in the catalogs are free and open use. They say on their website that it's accessible to anyone for any project. And these here are some examples of some of the licenses that are in the fonts. So basically, you should be able to use them in your apps. Now, Font Squirrel is another good resource because everything on Font Squirrel is free for commercial use. And they also have the ability to filter it down for fonts that you can use in your application. So that's a very handy one to know about. So they say on the website, 100% free for commercial use. So that's fonts. Next, I want to talk about icons. So Pixel Love is one that I use a lot myself. When I can, I like designing icons myself, but sometimes there's a time crunch and it's just really handy to have icons already made for you by a designer who's put lots of care into them. So they have over 5,000 iOS icons you can use and and um, these are available like in outline and field and they're also available in like for sketch and other formats that you can use. Another one that I quite like is Glyphfish. He has a couple of kits on his website with icons that you can use. Primaries by Parakeet is another one. So one of the designers on this is Louis Mantia, who's quite a well-known designer. And there's a lot of care put into these icons. Now there's also Google material design icons. You would think, well, that's Google. Why would I want to use that in an iOS app? But you can use them there as well. They're also quite nicely designed. You can search for something you're looking for. You can choose whether you want it filled, outlined, or even if you want it to have a rounded edge or a straight edge, and then you can download them. 
just say for example you wanted a settings icon you could search for a settings icon on Google Material Designs website and then you could download it and use it in your app so that's icon lastly I want to talk about stock by stock I mean stock photography vectors and also illustrations that you can use in your app now my one of my favorite stock websites is on splash you may have already heard of this one but if not it's a really great one every like anyone can submit photos to this website but it's curated by a bunch of editors so only the really best photos are shared on this website. You can also favorite images and add them to a collection. So if you're searching for something specific in your app, um, let's say for example, you did want to have a sunset picture in your app, you could make a collection and then search for it on Unsplash and just like add all the photos you like there and then download them when you're ready like my Mac doesn't have that much space personally so I don't just download everything I want straight away I have a look first I find that really useful Pixabay is another good one if you can't find it on Splash on, on Unsplash sometimes you can find something on Pixabay um, so this is similar that in that anyone can submit their photos to this one. Um, but it's not necessarily as well curated as Unsplash. You might have to hunt a bit more to find a really good image that you like. But you can find things you like on there as well. Now Vecteasy is a vector website. You might want to use this like if you're looking for a graphic or an icon to use in your app or maybe you even just want to research see how other designers have made a cloud for instance now on this website it has two different types of licenses the standard one you can download vectors for free you just have to attribute it somewhere so you could, for example, have an attribution page in your settings and say resources you've used. Or there's also a premium license which allows you to not have to give attribution. So the standard license is free to use. Their premium license is a subscription. Um, and that allows you to use it for personal and commercial use no attribution is required and there's unlimited digital reproductions sometimes uh, assets you want to download may have restrictions on how many times it can be viewed or something so that would like make you rest assured knowing that it can be viewed as many times as you need and you get a certain amount of images you can download for a month and I guess even if you just had the subscription for a month, anything that you downloaded would have that premium license. So Freepik is another one that's quite similar. You can search on this one for vectors as well. And again, you can download, you can download for free if you give attribution, or you can get a premium license, which is a subscription a month per month. So Freepik allows you to use anything with attribution for personal or commercial projects, but they do want you to slightly modif modify something. So for example, maybe you change a color or, or you put it with some other graphics or something. Um, and they do allow you to, they say in their license that you are allowed to use it in applications. So that's handy. 
So Wikipedia Commons is another place to get stock images. Here anyone can submit photos as well and they're often under the public domain. So you could search for a photo for your app here. Um, so they say in their they say in their agreements that almost everything can be used freely. However, check the license on any images. Some of them have some of them are licensed under open content, and others of them are public domain. Public domain usually is pretty pretty relaxed, you don't have to give attribution for that. So Undraw is a website I found recently that has a whole lot of illustrations. These are completely free to use. Um, you might want to use an illustration, for example, for an onboarding screen in your app. You want to liven it up a bit or you might want to use it in an empty state. So this website allows you to change the color, like the key color of the asset, and you could also put in like your own hex code for your branding color. So there's it changed to green. So Everything on Undraw has an MIT license and basically it says in that license that you can use it without the need to give attribution. So I've talked about guides, software, UI kits, fonts, icons and stock. I joined GitHub last night. I don't know what I'm doing on there, but <laughs> I put my slides up there if people want to check out the resources. I exported it as a PDF because I could not upload anything more than 25 megs and my slides are quite heavy <laughs> with images. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. And does anyone have any questions? Thank you.